Uplift pressure happens at the base of the dam, where water pressure is the highest. Water from the reservoir is forced down into the bedrock and then pushes up on the dam from below. Why is upwards pressure such a problem? Because it would heave the dam. With enough pressure, it could lift the dam itself. Yeah, but we have to relieve it. We yeah. Release the water, and you see that we relieve the pressure very fast. So if we open it totally, you see... So it's only a dribble of water creating that pressure. It's not a lot. Yeah, this small amount of water causes the uplift pressure. Is that now open to what was... So that yes. water is... Has that bit of water there? Yep. Come from there? Yes, it comes from there. And this small amount of water is coming here. Under the dam? Yes, under the dam. So if, if it lifts it, could it... You yeah. know, if it's too high, the uplift pressure, but it isn't. The reason it doesn't topple over is down to, well, taps. 600 of them positioned throughout the base of the dam. Right, so I should be glad that it's leaking. Yes. I can demonstrate this uplift. Thankfully, I've remembered to bring a bit of wood, some marbles, and a Tupperware box with a hole in it. Uplift pressure, the ability of water to lift millions of tonnes of dam off the ground and destabilise it. I have a demonstration here. This is my dam. This behind it is the reservoir, and these marbles are the water. Some of which, some of which has gone where I wanted it. Right, let's stack that in there. So that is the dam holding back the water. That's how it works. Now, immense pressure because of the height of that water. If some of that water, just a little tiny bit of it, as the dam heaves forwards under that pressure, gets underneath the dam and pops up, it destabilizes it. It's as simple as that. Ah, so this is a hole. This is what the whole ship's about. In this cathedral-like space, we're actually more than 10 metres below sea level. This is an enormous building. And this is not the whole hold, is it? It's not all of it. No. And hang on, this isn't even full height, is it? Because I go up above... Double it. Oh, so double this in every direction. Basically, yeah. That direction, that direction, mm -hmm. and that. And you've mm -hmm. got one of 11 holds. Mm -hmm. It's... I honestly think my brain is struggling to get hold of how big it is. Fully loaded, this ship carries a whopping 18,000 containers. If they were placed end to end, they would reach all the way into space. It's kind of spooky. It is kind of spooky, and it can get spooky when you're sailing because of the wind and the waves. You get these noises that are unexplained, and a lot of the crew are superstitious. Oh, that's it's proper scary. maritime stuff. Yeah. So there's, there's a sort of a sense of it being a bit haunted and a bit... Yeah, yeah. I totally get that. Ugh. I would not like to be left here on my own with a torch with slightly fading batteries. By doing away with a deck and piling its containers high, the Mary Maersk is able to carry over 200,000 tonnes of cargo. But how can something that looks like it has the structural integrity of a giant bathtub be strong enough to survive the cyclones of the South China Seas? I've come to the ship's kitchen, whatever, to demonstrate something absolutely critical to ships like this, and I need this sandwich box. So, imagine this is a ship. That's its deck on top. It's pretty rigid, but for container ships like this, you can't have that deck. They need to put containers in there, so... Here's one I prepared earlier, as this is now a food show. And as you can see, with no lid, it's all flexible. But when I say prepared earlier, I really did, because what I cut off was this bit. If we take the lid off our sandwich box, don't need that. With this bit on top, the rim, if you like, it's a lot more solid. It's a lot less flexible than without. And this bit here, it's called a torsion box. A torsion box is a reinforced rim just like the rim on a bucket, a cardboard cup, or a sandwich box. Its purpose is to stop the ship from flexing. And on the Mary Maersk, it's so big, it doubles up as corridors that run along the length of the hull. Now that's simple science used in a big way. <laughs> sound design engineer Mark Murphy helped create Tottenham's wall of sound. So you, Mark, were involved from the outset. 
Yeah, very much so. What's quite unique about this stadium is this south stand that we're in now. What was um, part of the driving factor was the fact that this is the home stand. So to make this unique and give the fans the opportunity to really influence the match and influence the venue was to put all these seats together as close as possible and then to really push this sound into the stadium. So you're turning this whole thing here into a sort of amplifier, sending that sound out to the rest of the crowd and the players. Exactly, yeah. The South Stand is the largest single-tier stand in the UK and can hold 17,500 fans. At 35 degrees, it's at the maximum steepness a UK stand can be, and the front row is just five metres from the goal line, keeping the fans close to the action. But creating enough noise to support your players and put off the opposition isn't just about the number of voices. Individual sounds are not that powerful, uh, and the distances here are huge, so sound dies away very quickly. So our job really is to kind of protect it and try and uh, help to reinforce it in the space. That's one of the lovely things about do, designing these kind of spaces, is you're creating a space that humans then use almost as an instrument. In this stadium, it's not enough that the South Stand acts like a loud hailer. The architecture of the whole building works to amplify the sounds even more, and it's all thanks to the roof. Imagine, if you will, that this fishbowl is the stadium. On this telephone, I've downloaded a completely genuine football chant, which I shall play, and we can measure the volume of it with this decibel meter. So we switch that on. That will now measure the peak volume. It's a real one. 98.4 decibels. If I add to this stadium a roof, not unlike this one, I just want to show how much difference it makes, just this little lip here in reflecting the sound back into the waiting crowd to enhance their match day experience. So, this is still in the same mode. Right, it'll record the max. And straight away that goes up to 107.7. And that's the effect of just this little lip around here, which works just like this roof. It doesn't have to cover the whole stadium to be enough to reflect sound back in where it's wanted, in here, with the crowd to create that atmosphere.